Good afternoon. If I stand right here, can you hear me? Can this hear me? You're good? Okay, good. My, uh, my training's in landscape architecture and, uh, and in biology. And my, I guess that's my undergrad and my graduate degrees. Uh, my PhD's in the relationship between the environments that we design and, and inhabit and our functioning. So um, yesterday when George mentioned the work in Chicago that looks at uh, the impact of green spaces on people's uh, functioning and behavior, that, that's the work that my lab has been doing in Chicago. Um, so I tread a little bit lightly here today talking about ecological services because that's a bit of an extension um, of, um, it, you know, pushes me. I guess we're all being pushed a little bit by, by this stuff, right? So. Um, what I'd like to talk about this afternoon are, um, first of all, what we mean by ecosystems and get some common understanding of that, and then talk about the kinds of services that humans and, uh, the, yeah, that humans get from the natural, healthy functioning of ecosystems. Give you some information from uh, the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment on where we're at and wh where we're headed, and then talk about, given that we're headed in some directions that don't look really uh, desirable, um, as as we've heard now from Val and, and um, from Don, uh, consider for a few moments who's most vulnerable, and take some and take a look at some maps that help us think about that. And it get, this gets back to my question from yesterday: Do we do scientists reach out to broader communities? by describing the problem, and is this the problem enough to m motivate a large portion of society? Well, I think that's probably true, but there's another portion of society that's gonna need uh, more motivation, and I think these maps will help call, call some t attention to that. So, so that's my plan for the next few minutes. Okay, so let's collectively define what we mean by an ecosystem. Who would like to shout something out? Community of organisms. A community of organisms. That's great. That's exactly that's exactly right, and it's exactly part of the decision or the the definition. It's a community of organisms. Isn't this a lovely picture? I stole that off of. I, I got that from Google Images uh, this morning. Um, it's a community of organisms. That's true, and it can range in a great variety of scales. Right? You can look at ecosystems on the scale of many, many uh, square kilometers or uh, cubic kilometers in the ocean, or you can talk about an ecosystem in terms of the functioning of an oak tree and what keeps that oak tree alive. Okay, so we got about half the dis we've got about half of the um, definition right now of an ecosystem. What, what's missing from that? It's the, it's the community of organisms that engage and interact in some type of uh, system, right? And then there's something else that's going on in there, too. It's self-sustaining. The energy or presence. Right. Of there's, the geophysical. Yeah, there's the geophysical piece, too. Right, right. And that's the kind of um, Wikipedia-like definition. You've got, the, um, you've got the, the living things in their communities and the associated non-living environment that interact together and uh, impact one another. Um, if Bruce Folks was here, he would talk about the, how um, these living organisms actually can create non-living ecological units from his work on um, hot springs and whatnot. Okay, and, and then people that study ecosystems, they can, you know, they, they're scientists, they, they, they're good at isolating things, so they can talk about the entire thing or the entire ecosystem, or they can isolate on something like energy inputs and follow energy through the system uh, and get some uh, clear sense about how the system is functioning with respect to one or several things. Uh, the study of ecosystem science has been around for, for what, Eric? 60-ish? 100 years? Okay, 100 years, 100 years. I, I think that um, there's several lessons that are, that have come from those 100 years that, that um, are important for our bearing and certainly that um, Eric knows a lot about. 
Uh, the first lesson that I think is really important is that is, is the concept of interdependence. That too often we treat nature as a set, a range, a smorgasbord, a buffet of um, discrete elements that are there, just like a buffet, in fact, for us to pick and choose among, right? And we, we like a little more of this, and we like a little less, and we're not in the mood for this, but we'd like to take some of that and use it. And the science, ecosystem science, has helped us understand that um, while we may do that, our impacts are far greater than on those individual discrete parts, because really, within an ecosystem, nothing is discrete. There, it's all about these interdependencies, that, that nature is an interdependent whole. Um, so so while, we, while our economic system may reward us for treating um, nature as, you know, ha as having these discrete components, the reality is that it doesn't work like that. And the second thing is that, um, the second lesson that I'd like to focus our attention on is that um, nature doesn't recognize private property boundaries. It doesn't care that your land ends here and someone else's land is over there and, and what happens on their land or what happens um, in a neighboring state or in a neighboring nation uh, oftentimes has impacts, intended or unintended, be, because, uh, because of this sense of interconnectedness. So these two ideas really are related um, and, and, they, and they cause trouble. For the way we, for the way that we often behave. All right, so ecosystems. So that's kind of the background. So now we know what ecosystems are, and we know that there's this sense of interconnectedness between them, right? So let's think about this kind of services that they provide us as human beings. Um, they provide four. We, they're categorized in four ways. Things that. Uh, ec ecosystems provide us with things that we use right from the right from them. They help regulate ecological systems or um, physical systems. They provide cultural benefits and services, and they do some supporting things that help the other things happen. Let, let's take a quick look at at some of these provisioning services. Can anybody think of a Bruce? Give me a provisioning service. What service do we get directly from an ecosystems? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's not what I was thinking of, but I think you could make that argument. Yes. Okay. What's another one? Something really food, right? Food, right? What else? What? What's that? We have fiber, water, um, shellfish, shelter, right? <laughs> shelter. <laughs> uh huh. Right. Good, so you got that, fuel, right. So you get the idea. That there's, there's just raw materials that we can take from healthy functioning ecosystems. And the implication, of course, is that if you have ecosystems that are not functioning well, you'll have less of this stuff, right, overall. Okay, then there's regulating services. And where did Don go, did I miss him? Okay, so regulating services, what's a, think of a, how could a healthy, functioning ecosystem uh, regulates something that we care about? Or what kind of things might a healthy functioning ecosystem help regulate? Uh, I'm going to talk about that one in the final one. The wetlands. Yeah, the wetlands, the um, water regulation, right. Uh, uh, there's lots of information now that uh, healthy functioning ecosystems re help regulate the climate. And then certainly, uh, as Val mentioned yesterday, uh, some diseases are held in check when you've got a healthy system. When you've got a system under stress, it looks like there's opportunities for some diseases to really take off. So that's, that's, another, that's a very important reason for us. Used to regulate human expansion. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. balance of nature. You disrupted that, but life feeding on life 